following the music and creating an instrument that the artists can uh, communicate with. They can communicate their emotions through. That's what Zildjian stands for. All of the professional series symbols all start from the same bronze and I don't know that most people realize that the bronze is already 400 years old because Avidus the first was called to the palace in Constantinople in 1618 which is just it's amazing so we have a foundry and there's two big um, electric arc furnaces in there that hold about 1500 pounds of metal and we put 80 percent copper and 20 percent tin in and the metal gets poured into these big open iron molds and we make a casting and once the metal solidifies the casting is dumped out of the pot and then once they have a load of castings they'll check the weights they'll weight sort them and also do a quality check to make sure that there's no charcoal or no uh, impurities on the surface because we don't want to roll that into the symbol and we also don't want anything to get into our big steel rollers that we use to roll the metal out once that step is completed the castings usually sit overnight and the next day somebody from the rolling crew will come over and then they'll have a production sheet and say okay we're going to make this model next they'll grab that bin of castings bring them over to our oven and we have two uh, huge rotary hearth ovens and what that means is that the oven goes in a circle so they'll take the castings and they'll put so many on a tray there's about 22 trays inside the oven and if we're doing a, a batch of 220 symbols there'll be 11 castings on each tray and the great thing about these rotary ovens is that the first tray that goes in is the first tray to come back out about 30 or 40 minutes later and essentially what we're doing is uh, we're heating up the the castings to about 1500 degrees Fahrenheit and what this does uh, it stress relieves the metal. It takes all the stresses out of it. Uh, the heating is actually called annealing. It stress relieves the metal so then it comes out in the castings and then a short rake operator that has a short paddle will take the castings and pass it to the rolling mill operator and he'll push it through the rolling mill and on the other side of the rolling mill is a gentleman that's holding a, essentially a coal shovel and he catches them and then they go back on the tray and they'll go back into the oven for another 30, 40 minutes, come back out. So we'll do this up to eight and 12 times through the rolling mill. And what we end up with is a blank. We have an upper limit and a lower limit for the thickness to make any given model that we're trying to make. So those blanks will go on, on a vented table to cool off because the blanks are still very, very hot from the rolling process. Once they cool down, we'll take a template and we'll find the middle of the blank and we'll take a piece of chalk and we'll put an X mark in uh, where the bell is going to go, the cup. And one of the great things is when I started here, we only had five different bell shapes. And now we have like 25 or 26. And you change the bell and you change the, the type of sound that you can get, which is really fantastic. So what we're going to do next is we're going to take it over. Uh, a lot of the symbols that we make now, we put it through a little blasting machine to get a lot of the, the oxides off the surface. Again, what happens during the tempering process is that when it, when it hits the water, an outer layer of tin oxide is created and there's a lot of loose tin oxide on the surface that we like to blast off because tin oxide is very, very tough and it can beat up on hammerheads and, and lathe tools. Then we'll take the blanks and then we'll uh, trim them. So we'll either circle shear them or we'll blank them to a perfect circle, a little bit bigger than its final diameter because when we put the shape into the symbol, the diameter gets smaller. Then we take it and we'll put it in its appropriate shaping die in a 100 ton press and we'll bring it down and we'll put a rough curvature in the metal. 
After it's been put into this rough shape, then we put it on a hammering machine and we'll put hammer rows in there. And a lot of people like to talk about hammering, but hammering is very, very simple. There's two ways you can hammer a symbol, hammer rows or hammer marks everywhere. That's it. Then the symbols will go to a lathing machine and we lathe the bottom side first. So we'll just shave it. It's literally shaving metal off. We take that outer layer of tin oxide off and then you get the gleaming bronze metal revealed below. Then it will get passed over to a finished lathe operator who is one of the most skilled um, employees in the factory. Because think about it. Here's this guy, it's almost the last step, and he has to really be good at what he's doing or he's gonna ruin like two weeks worth of work that got done before him. So he's gonna shave it down to its final weight and thickness. So we get it to the weight and then we know that it's going to meet the sound characteristics when it gets down to the testing room. After finish lathing, it goes to an edging machine where we uh, bring it down to its final diameter and smooth the edge and then the batch of cymbals gets wheeled down to the cymbal tester. And he uses a really fantastic uh, piece of equipment that's highly sophisticated. His ears and a drumstick. Hi everybody, I'm Jeff West here. I'm a tester here at Zildjian. And I've been with the company for 30 years as of this month, October 2019. Um, there's only two of us as testers, there's me and Leon Ciappini, and Leon's been with the company for 58 years. Leon has taught me everything I know about testing, and I'm going to show you what we do. We try to listen for each and every symbol, and we hit every single cast symbol that Zildjian makes. If you've hit a Zildjian symbol, we've hit that before you have. So it just takes me a second to hear the ride, and notice the symbol opens up, and it takes that quick. And over time, you can hear it sooner and sooner as you listen to the pitch go up and down. They're all unique. They're all their own individual instruments. You can hear that. I hope you can hear that. You can feel that in the room, but I hope you can hear that on the camera. So what we are listening for is a range. We want a range of sound, and I'm going to explain why we want a range of sound after I show you what a range of sound is and you can hear it. So this is our 17-inch tuner of our A-Custom Crash. This is what we are trying to make when we are making a 17-inch A-Custom Crash. This is a beautiful, bright, clean, cutting sounding crash. This here is the same symbol as what we call the standard. It is the least will vary off of this sound and still call it a Zildjian symbol. lower in pitch, a little more dirt in it, but it sounds beautiful all on its own. The beauty of that is you tell us what you prefer. We don't tell you. We want you to create your sound. We want you to speak for yourself. As an individual player, drummer, we want you to sound like you. And that's why we have a range of sounds, so you can choose through many. When you are picking cymbals, you always want to try to hit three of the same cymbal and you will see how different they are and how beautiful each individual one is. And that's what we try to do every single day. Yep, it's a lot of fun hitting cymbals every single day and I, I do it every day and I love it. I'm up at 4 a.m. to get started at 5 a.m. and I hit cymbals all day long. It's a great job. I love what I do. The cymbals are not considered Zildjian until the cymbal tester says they are. He has the final determination that it can be a Zildjian cymbal. Until he says that, we can't print it and trademark it. So the next step after he says, yes, these are all acceptable, they go to printing. Um, and a lot of the symbols, uh, we also put a clear coat on to keep it showroom new and, and during shipping and, and to the stores for display. So we'll put the appropriate logo on and then we'll put the trademark on. And I've been here long enough that I remember when we didn't have a serial number in the trademark and we used to roll the trademarks in and we didn't emboss it. And in 1994, we started to use a laser engrave and we could change the size of the trademarks uh, to the, the size of the symbols. And then the symbols go to the shipping room and then we ship them out around the world. So in a nutshell, that's how you make a Zildjian symbol.